For this video, we're going to be talking about population characteristics and how different communities around the world differ based on those characteristics. So sometimes we hear about these rankings about the best places to live in the world. <clears throat> and we want to think about who makes those decisions? What characteristics do they base those rankings on? So the United Nations has a Human Development Index, or an HDI, uh, that collects that information and that data around health, knowledge, and standard of living of people within a community to determine that ranking. They use statistics. So statistics are information, numbers that are coll collected around people, events, and things, and then they're put together um, to, to create sort of those global patterns. Canada used to have a very high ranking, or was ranked one of the best countries in the world to live in, um, between 1994 and 2000. Uh, it dropped in its rankings because the United Nations realized that the health, knowledge, and standard of living for many indigenous populations is substandard. And um, so we lost some of our status until we can do better. Governments are always investigating population changes because the community needs to adapt to those changes. And if they can predict them, if they can foresee them happening in the future, they're better prepared. So for example, if you collect data about the age of your population, if you realize in a few years you're going to have a large group of your population that is of a certain age and is going to require health care or treatment or facilities, you can have those facilities available prior to that need. Just the same as um, if there are a lot of children being born, schools or um, school boards need to realize they have to have more schools to be prepared for that influx of students. All right, we also, they also calculate birth rate and death rate, which is related to health in that human development index. So the idea of how many births there are per year um, per wi from women for uh, 14 to, or 15 to 44. And then the death rate per 1,000 people. Um, per year in a certain area. The literacy rate is based on how many uh, people 15 years of age or older can read and write, and life expectancy, how long can we expect someone to live? And that has to do with their standard of living. If they have a harder life, um, they're not able to access resources, they don't have um, good medical care, their life expectancy will be lower, their standard of living will be lower, their HDI ranking will be lower. So also they can take into consideration fertility rate. So this is related to population growth. So fertility rate is the, the amount of babies that are being born per um, women of a certain age every single year. Uh, and then they take into consideration infant, infant mortality rate. So children under the age of one who pass away would be considered um, an infant mortality rate. And then women who don't have children. So all of that comes into play uh, to determine how many children are being born in a country over a certain period of time. Now, for governments, you, you want to think about your population replacement. Um, and so if we think about it, Canada has a fertility rate of 1.5 children um, per family. So it takes two people to make a baby. Um, and if we only have 1.5 children being born for every two people, we're not replacing our population. So the goal for our, our, our replacement level would be 2.1 children per household. Now, in developed countries, fewer women are having children. However, because we, our population globally is so high, at 7 billion people, there are more women in the world. So even though they are having fewer children, because there are more of them, there is still this population growth. Um, and so we're, we're, they're still predicting, statistics are still saying that we, by uh, 2050, our population will increase by 3 billion people. So we watch this fertility rate and we, we watch this replacement level so that we can understand how population um, will grow in one community, but also globally. All right, so the birth rate is calculated by how many children are born by every thousand people in a country. And the death rate is how many people die by... Uh, per 1,000 people in a community. And then 
uh, those are calculated, right? So if your birth rate is higher than your death rate, then your population is increasing. So if more people are being born than dying, obviously you have more people in your community. If your death rate is higher than your birth rate, your population is declining because you're not replacing those people within your community, that population, um, you're not replacing it. Now, sometimes there can be incidents that greatly impact the death rate and increase it exponentially over a couple of years. Um, that could be war, that could be major catastrophes, um, natural disasters, or it could be an epidemic, some sort of serious illness that um, causes a, a large number of people to die in a very short period of time. So that could uh, impact your uh, death rate. So, and then we have movement of people. So we have a community and people don't always stay in the same country, in the same place. So um, emigration is that movement of leaving one country and going to another. Immigration is that coming to a new country. The difference between these is your net migration. So if you think about uh, how many people are immigrating to your country um, and then subtracting the people who are leaving your country, that's your net migration, the movement of people in and out of your country. Now, with large migrations of people, so if there is a natural disaster or there is conflict, and we have large numbers of people emigrating a certain area and arriving in new areas, you could have rapid growth in population. The, the, the issues around this is that um, the community is not prepared. So previously I talked about we could analyze data so that communities can be prepared for the needs of the population. If the population increases quickly, we don't have the facilities available to meet those basic needs. So governments might have difficulty providing food, health care, education, clean water, uh, if their population increases really quickly. There's also statistics around doubling time, where you collect data on how quickly a community's population will double. And one of the things that statistics have shown is that sometimes this is a difference. One of the things they use to measure developed versus developing countries is developed countries tend to take longer to, to double in population. Um, so the statistics are right now are around it takes about 500 years for a developed country to, um, to double in its population. And this could be due to uh, um, fewer people having children, um, and choosing other things uh, besides a large families. In developing countries, the doubling time is much shorter. Uh, and so right now it's saying it's around 37 years it takes for a population in a developing country to double. So then when you, if you think about it, if, if you have more people in a community, even if they start to have fewer children, by the simple fact that you have more people who are having children, your population continues to increase. So these are some things to keep in mind when you're looking at the characteristics of a certain community. <clears throat>